just for a few minutes, I want to talk to you from this topic. I want to ask you a question. What body part are you? What body part are you? No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, God loves you. Well, over, the next, over the next several weeks, I'm intending to preach sermons, try to preach sermons, uh, attempt to preach sermons that are going to challenge you in this new year. We may not shout, but I hope you'll be motivated to action for Jesus. I think there are too many of us who are sitting in the pew and not doing anything. The Lord needs some work. Now, if, if, if someone, if someone, if someone would ask us how we feel about our bodies, most of us would probably rather not think about our bodies. If we did think about them, our thoughts would probably not be very complimentary. You'd hear things like it's too fat, too skinny, too short, too tall, uh, it's not in shape, or whatever. Something negative. It, 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 it would be something negative that we'd say about our bodies. So, so it's strange, it's kind of strange that Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27, now all of you together are Christ's body. And each one of you is a separate and necessary part of it. You, yes, you are parts of the body of Christ. Look around you, look around you, look around you. Each one of you here, each one of you who is a member of the church is also a part of the body of Christ. As Paul searched for a simile, as, part, as Paul searched for an image, a symbol to adequately describe the church, the one he came back to time and time again was the comparison between the church and a physical body. All right. Now, now why, why did Paul, why do you think Paul would choose to use something as imperfect as our material bodies to illustrate something as mystical as the church of Jesus Christ. You see, a hand is just a hand. A foot is just a foot. Disconnected, this leg and this arm are just that, a leg and an arm. They are all separate body parts, but not a body. However, when they are all brought together into one entity, they can become one body and have the potential of making a productive contribution. My arm by itself can't do much. My leg by itself can't do much. But when you put my leg and my arm and my head and something else and something else and something else together, I'm somebody. Can I get away with it? You see, you are one person. I am one person. Carvel is one person. That is one person alone. We are just individual persons. But when we individually get together and add Jesus to the mix, we become a body. Uh, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. When we come together and put Jesus in the mix of it all, we become a body. Ah, a body doesn't fight against itself. If it does fight against itself, it's a sick body. Yeah. We, we ought to watch how we fight one another in the church. Uh, we ain't got no business fighting against ourselves. I'm going to go around hitting my foot with a hammer. Uh -huh. so Jesus, Jesus is no longer in the world physically. So if he wants a child, if Jesus wants a child taught in children's church, he needs somebody to teach. If he wants somebody touched with compassion, he uses our compassion. We jointly fit together 
are his body. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up only one body. The church has many parts, but it's only one body. Pay attention. Pay attention to something. Pay attention to something here. Each part, each part of your body has something in common with the other parts. Each part, each individual part of your body has something in common with the other parts. With all the parts, what all the parts have in common is you. Your leg, your leg doesn't belong to one person and your arm to somebody else. Think about that now. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Your, your, your arm is here. And your leg is across the street. You'd look, you'd look like a mess trying to stand up. Huh? Each individual part of the body has you in common. You are the common denominator that ties everything together. The church, the church also has a focal point. And that focal point is Jesus. Jackson ain't the focal point of the church. I know you've been here a long time, but you ain't the focal point of the church. I know your family was one of the founding members, but they ain't the focal point of the church. Jesus is. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 reminds us that the body has many parts, not just one part. All of us, all of us are different. The diversity of the body is something that's beyond debate. No two parts of the body are identical. Not only are your hands different from your feet, but your left hand is different from your right hand. Some folk got one foot that's bigger than the other. Can I get a witness yet? And they're on the same body. We have ears that hear, eyes that see, and feet that walk. And we like it that way. You don't say, boy, I wish I could see with my toes and smell with my ears. And you don't say, I wish I were a big foot or a big eye. A mess running out, and you ain't nothing but a big foot. Diversity, diversity is not just an accidental attribute of the body, it's all part of the divine design for you and for me. Yet, too often, watch this thing now, too often, we try to make every member of the body of Christ identical. Now let me go back here. Diversity is not just an accidental attribute of the body. It's part of the divine design for you and for me. But too often we try to make every member of the body of Christ identical. We can even get to the point where we view our local church as if it were only one member of the body of Christ. For example, if we were to carry that thing to the extreme, we might end up with churches that instead of being bodies would just be collections of the same body part. <laughs> For example, in churches that are caught up in social concerns, we might see row after row of bleeding hearts. Churches that focus on evangelism might be full of beautiful feet. In churches where praise and worship is the primary focus, there would be pews full of uplifted hands. Then if we looked into the churches where the visible gifts are prominent, we might see row after row of tongues. But that's not a body, is it? A body isn't made up of a bunch of tongues, a bunch of feet, hands, eyes, or ears. A body is made up of a combination of body parts. And one of these a couple of these and some of those. Even though God insists on unity, 